Yeah, you know, it's sort of interesting that you have Surafong out there, many other people, and the coup leader himself saying this is not a coup we are expecting, and then a very abrupt change. Was there any notification before the coup occurred, or did this come as a surprise? I think it was a bit of a surprise to all of us. You know, it's no secret that Thailand's had many months of difficulties, complications. Martial law was imposed, as you'll recall, two days earlier. So, you know, there were signs that things were not normal. But quite frankly, right before the announcement came out, all of the respective parties were meeting together. And so I think many of us thought a great opportunity for the kind of genuine dialogue we'd all been looking for for a long time. Since the coup, have you been able to meet with anyone from the military or anyone uh, from the caretaker government? Have there been any contacts? You know, we've had our usual range of contacts at, at many, many different levels. But I think perhaps most importantly, the key contact has been the public message by the United States Secretary of State. You know, our, obviously a senior diplomat in Washington who's made very clear the public message of the United States, which is the same as our private message. There's been some speculation that members of the interim cabinet uh, took refuge here at the U.S. Embassy. Is there any truth to that? There's no truth to that, but I think this is the sort of wild rumor that starts when you don't have a free and open press. And this is one of the issues Secretary Kerry has raised. Secretary Kerry has talked about the importance of the freedom of the press, which has been restricted. You, know, you and I are having a conversation here that people in Thailand don't have the ability to have. So it leads to lots of rumors because there isn't the usual source of television, radio, discussion of issues. And I think that's very dangerous in a society. There have been diplomatic relations uh, between the United States and Thailand since 1883. Thailand's considered the United States' closest ally in Southeast Asia. There are these um, military uh, longstanding connections. But since 2001, we've seen four elections, three prime ministers ousted, and two coups. Does the United States have a role in fostering democracy in Thailand? It's an important question. And you know, every nation charts its own path, and obviously the Thai people will chart their own path. But as a friend, as a historic partner to Thailand in every area, economic, security, we work together on health research, protecting you know, wildlife together, so many different things. And so I think we do have an important role to play in not only making our views known, but in, in helping Thailand think about the issues that matter. The Thais will, of course, chart their own path. But as Secretary of State Kerry has said, we really do call for an immediate return to a civilian government, the lifting of press restrictions, you know, respect for human rights, and a path to elections. You spoke about uh, the vast array of cooperation between the United States and Thailand. What are the ramifications for that cooperation, and uh, especially in the military arena? As Secretary of State, I think, said it best. We have a long-standing relationship, but a coup in Thailand will have a negative implication. There will be a high-level review in Washington by the United States government of our assistance and our engagements with Thailand, especially the Thai military. So that will be looked at very carefully, and I think you know, in the coming days we'll learn more as the senior leaders of my government look at this and decide how best to respond. So from your standpoint as the U.S. Ambassador to Thailand, what is the next step? Uh, my first concern, and, and always at the top of my list, is the safety and security of American citizens. And so we've put out messages to American citizens very quickly after this coup was announced advising them of a curfew that's in place, advising them to exercise caution. We will continue, my team and I, to monitor the situation so that we can offer American citizens information. We are in touch with Americans throughout the country. Situation is very calm now, but that's an important step. The next immediate step really takes place in Washington, and that's the review of our assistance and engagement. Okay. Great. Thank you very much.